All right, are we back here? We are. Who? Who? Parametric camp. Parametric camp. Parametric camp. <laughs> that doesn't really sound great, right? Nah, nah. We need to find. I need to get. I need to get connected to whoever makes the Daniel Schiffman music videos. <laughs> and, and get something going on there. That would be cool. Anyway, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, or morning, or whatever this live stream might find you. So I'm going to skip the introductions. You know me, you know Discord, you know the server, you know the channel, everything. And you know what we're already doing. We're doing, we're in the middle of recording a advanced Grasshopper development in Grasshopper series. So I'm going to start right away because I need to cut it out much sooner this afternoon, much earlier, because I have a lot of things to do this afternoon and things to prepare for tomorrow. So I'm swamped all the way up. So let's get it going. And when is the next live stream going to be? I don't even know. I don't have time because like the Acadia workshops are happening this weekend and I'm very excited about that. And, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yes, I, I don't know when the next live stream is going to be. Because on top of that, I'm not going to be here next weekend next. All right, who cares? Uh, it will be at some point. We will make it happen. So, where were we? This morning, we were right here, and I was discussing how we were doing the data components exercise and I was, what was I doing? I made gate item, get first, get last, remove item, remove first, remove last, flatten graph, and then get branch. But we were going to do it by item, which is pretty straightforward, and remove branch by path. Remove branch. Well, I don't know about removing a branch. Wait, wait, remove branch, remove it at. And this that did, did this work? We didn't work because uh, we can't. So, sorry, um, oh, Friday, I cannot do Friday Kartik. Like, I, I have a lot of teaching and a lot of stuff going on. Mm. This fall is going to be bad. Like, the, 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 the streams are going to be all over the place. So, I was testing. Sorry, just in context, I was testing what I wanted to do for examples in this hands-on exercise. So let me try a couple of things out and then let me try a couple of things out and then we can go back to recording the video. So I want to get branch count, three number paths. Um, how do I remove a branch, actually? I wonder if the best thing to do is just to copy the data tree and without that one branch, hmm, which could be interesting as an exercise, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, remove paths. Simplify paths, stream, stream access. Simplify paths, path access, merge, merge tree. Item, insert, and serve path, clear data, branches, branch count. Eh, you know what? Let's actually do it the, the hardcore way. So we're going to do remove, it's going to be data tree of the type object, whatever that is clean and that's going to be a new data tree oopsies a new data tree my god a new data tree and then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over all of these branches i is less than p dot count oh actually we need to i don't know we can scroll and then Exactly. And then we can do J here, right? And if J is different than I, then what we do is to clean, we add a range, which is going to be called T 
t.branches.j and then t.paths.j. Correct? Is that so? Um, actually, let me leave this here so that I can show that this is not a way to go. And then I just do clean here. And data tree object that contain a count. Uh, yeah, well, sorry, branch count. Exactly. Does that work? All right, so I'm so this is what we have. So this is what we have. This is what we get from get branch. Hmm. What's kind of lame about this is that we lose the branch name. So this could also be improved. Uh, this could also be improved nicely by actually fetching the the by actually fetching. Ooh, that's a very good one. So actually, this one we could say. I'm testing things here, right? Just I don't worry. I will explain in a second what we're doing and why we're doing this. So don't 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 hold on, hold on, brace yourselves. <laughs> so what we can do is like we can create a new data tree of the type object, and then that's uh, clean, for example, and it's going to be a new data tree of the type object, whatever, right. And then we iterate i equals zero, i is less than t dot branch count i plus plus. And then if, sorry, I'm going to iterate with j again. And if j equals i, then we take that branch and we add it to we add it to, uh, sorry, clean at range. We're going to add t dot branches dot j at t dot paths dot j as well. And then here, this is not good anymore. We output v equals clean. And I like this much better because now the output, you can see the output is actually the tree, just the branch itself, which is kind of nice. It's actually very nice. And then here we get the, all right. And then yes, uh, that's actually quite nice. So that's actually a nice thing. You see, this is why it was good to stop the recording this morning because I was already like, e you know, a little e iffy. Remove branch. So I think, I think these two examples are going to be enough. I don't want to get into path names because then that's going to involve decomposing. Uh, okay, get branch. Let's see how that would be. Let me just do it real quick. And then let me just do this real quick. This should be get branch by path, and then this would be a string, and then this is going to be, for example, one. Okay, and what I would like to do is I would like to make sure that, and yeah, this tree is not very complex actually.
So I could actually just grab this a little bit, no, and get a bit more complexity. Yes, exactly. And uh, I'm just trying a few things here. Don't worry. I'm, I'll be right there with you in a second. Uh, up, up, up. Okay, so that's the branch I want to get. And then this would involve basically the algorithm would involve a lot of string manipulation. Uh, um, I'm looking at the string class in the documentation. T-shirt string class methods compare concat. Um, split is there a split? There's a trim with all leading and trim occurrences of a set. of a set of specified characters when the current string are removed. Remove the leading and trim. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at the documentation for strings. Um, Remove, remove uh, with an which in which a specified number of characters from the current strings are deleted. Uh, no. Replace. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's say I enter a really messed up, okay, a really messed up path. So what I can do is I can say, all right, so let's string P, string clean is going to be equal to P. Then P dot, I'm going to trim, what am I going to trim? I'm going to trim for example, all these characters. And then I'm going to remove this, I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to remove all this. Okay, trim, stars to trim. Okay, and then P. Sorry, clean, clean, and clean. Oops, that sucks. Wait, so it's every. Oh, okay. Clean equals this. All right. And then clean equals clean replace white spaces by nothing and then you got that okay and then <clears throat> string digits equals uh, clean dot split by this one and this is going to be digits for example nope uh, uh, um, split dot character. Okay, and then those are strings. And then I need to turn those into, I need to turn those into, what do I need to turn those into? I need to turn those into an array of integers because what was I doing here? Get path. So it was t dot path, and then ran 
branch, find the branch by a path or a grasshopper path index the index. Mm -hmm. All right, so branch, so we would need to create int uh, digit strings, okay, and digits equals a new integer with digit str dot length. Okay, and then for each D for each string digits in no, for each string S in digits, then convert digits dot oh no, I hate you. I need to do a for loop. Hello, everyone. You might be joining the stream right now. I am, I am testing a couple of things that I want to see if they work before I go into the live stream. And so just forget, don't bother <laughs> whatever I'm doing here. And then just, um, yes, just, uh, just uh, let me do a couple of things and then I will go back to teaching mode in a second. So, right digits i is going to be equal to convert dot um how did i do this string to in conversion oh you can all right so we could do int 32 dot parse um uh, digit stars at okay and that is not going to work because i have a typo okay so that works okay and then grasshopper path is going to be equal to path is going to be equal to a new grasshopper path with this array of digits. Okay. All right. What is the path? Show me the path. The path is that one. And that's very clean. And now what I want is a list of objects. Oh my god. List branch equals new list of branch. All right, I'm going to do this branch. And then what am I going to do? No, this is not this I need to get from T. I need to get branch and I need to get the branch that is at path. And then branch. Is that so? Well, that was overly complicated. Woohoo! But it worked. Okay, so I'm going to save this here on my cheat sheet over here. Okay. And then. So, okay. Get branch. All right. Get branch and then okay i think with that we are probably good correct all right how's everyone doing this is boring right don't worry i am going to i'm going to start very soon okay and Okay, and I'm going to start very soon. And remove branch and get branch by path.
And then here, remove branch. How do I remove it? So I got the path here. All right. And then t dot remove path. And then that's going to be equal to the path. And then once we got that, then t, for example, is that so? Yeah, and 1.2 is missing. Choo-hoo! All right, this is great. And so remove by path is basically the same, but using it's just the same, but change the. Don't worry, I'll, I will explain everything. Kartik, you got it. I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I was just trying things out. I was just building the examples, but I'll do it. I'll just, um, I'll explain it properly right now. Don't worry. Uh, turn this thing to pass into a function. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, so now <laughs> let me clean up all this mess. Get branch is fine. Okay. Okay, let me clean up all this mess. Okay. And where did I leave it last time? This morning? Oh God. Okay. So let me see where's the footage. Uh, okay, so I was here. And I was struggling, as you can see, a lot. I don't want to get into the mess. That's why we set the input to be of the type list. Okay, we can see that the bit whatsoever. And just a Boolean flag telling it what it is and has now a structure with more branches <clears throat> flattened all the way here in my list of data components that I'm building and prototyping for our for our plug. Okay. Now, what is the next thing that we're going to implement? Okay, and that's what I need to continue. So I had my screen and I had it something like this, right? It's something like that. Okay. And I'm going to remove this. How about that? Okay, fine. I'll get back to work. Seriously. Huh? <laughs> now All right. So what is the next thing that we're going to implement? And that's where I start. Okay. And so that's going to be, uh, that's going to be getting a branch. Mm -hmm.
The next thing we're going to try is something very similar to getting the item or removing items. But in this case, what we're going to try is to get a full branch out of a data tree and to remove a full branch also out of a data tree, which um, as you will see very soon, there's two ways to do it, the easy way and the pro way of doing it. And as you may have guessed, we're going to learn the pro version of how to do that. Um, so bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a version of this real quick and I'm going to start with um, with getting branches by I'm going to get a branch and I'm going to get a branch by the order of that branch so the first one the second one or the third one this is going to be the an integer representing the order and this is going to be the tree and then here what I would like to get is the output as the branch all right and then I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to keep here the algorithm and I'm going to move things a little down here because it's kind of busy over there. And just to make sure to, that things are going well, I recommend this always. Let's take a look at a panel with the da original data and, and that we're working with. And let's take a look at another panel with the outputs that we're going to get here. Okay. The first thing that I can notice is that without even writing any code, the component is running three times, one probably for each one of the branches in the original tree. What that means to me is a reminder that I have forgotten to change that the component works one time for each list. And what I want is for the component to work once for each one of the data trees. And data trees are always just one. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change these two tree axis, all right, tree, tree axis. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to retrieve a branch, the branch, the, the second branch of the tree in this case, um, and output it here. So there's two ways to go about that. If you think about it with what we've seen before, the fastest way to do this could be to say B is going to be equal just simply to the, I'm not, oh, not, not an L, sorry. I'm going to rename this to tree because now this is a tree. This is just visual flavor for me. Um, so I'm taking a tree and I'm outputting a branch. So I'm going to take here, I'm going to say that the output B has to be equal to T dot, and then I can access the list of branches. And then from that list of branches, I can retrieve the branch that is at position I. So the first one, the second one, the third one. And if I do that, this is going to work and this works perfectly fine but it's not very clean in my opinion, because even though this branch here is indeed the second one, I can see it here. What has happened is that since I haven't really taken good care of this, Grasshopper has automatically renamed the list that I output it. Because remember, whenever I take a branch from a data tree, that branch is of the type list of whatever, and then Grasshopper automatically detects that that's a list and then does a little bit of magic to conform that list to the data tree structure. And that's why Grasshopper ass assigns an automatic data tree with this uh, path of zero zero. But if it, what we're doing is retrieving a branch from a tree, it feels like that branch that I'm extracting should have the exact same properties of the original one, which is to be one single branch with the original path name of that branch in the first place. So because we want to make, we want to be clean and nice and professional computational designers, let's try the more advanced way, which will also give us like a little bit of an insight of different ways to create data trees, because that is the problem. The problem is that on B, we are outputting an object, which is of the type list of blah, blah, blah. And that is so because branches, when you pick up an element from a branch, the return type is a list of objects. It's not a data tree anymore. What we need to do though is instead of that, what we need to do is on B, we need to spit out some kind of data tree that has the branch that we have selected with the correct path. Okay. So how can we do that? Well, I, let's see T dot um, the, can we select a branch? We can select a branch 
from a data tree, but then we need to take, we need to get, um, sorry, we need to, we need to have a path, etc., etc. So I don't think this is going to work. And there are other methods here. Well, long story short, the nicest way of doing this is just creating a simple new data tree from scratch. Okay, that's going to be a clean data tree. I'm going to call it data tree, and then it's going to be of the type object. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to iterate over all the branches in the original in the original um, in the original tree and then we're only going to retrieve the ones that are part of the i that was a really bad way of saying it let me say this again what i'm going to do is i'm going to extract the branch that is at position i i'm going to extract the path that is at position i from this tree and then i'm going to use that to add them to the new tree that is only going to have this one object so how can I then do that? So I'm going to say list of objects, uh, list of objects, the branch is going to be equal to t dot branches, the whichever branch was in position i. And this is what I was meaning before when I was saying that when we query a branch from the list, what we obtain in return is an object of the type list of whatever. If I run this, hopefully it's not, everything is going to work. Yeah, I don't get a result yet, but things work correctly. And then what I would like to do also is I would like to take the path. So I'm going to call this path, whichever path is also at position I, which is going to be the path of the branch that is at the same position. Once I have these two, what I can do is to the clean data tree, the one that I defined before, I can add this branch with this particular path. So what we saw before is that we can add individual elements. So, so to clean, we can just say add individual elements. So for example, an object, whatever, we could add it to with a particular path. However, the, in this case, we don't want to add one element. We want to add a list of elements. So, so for that, there's a special, there's another one that we can use, which is called add range which takes a list of data, in this case, that's going to be the full branch that I extracted before, and also accepts a path as the target where to add that data. And that's it. Since I have that already, I can now spit out this, and you can see that now what I'm getting is the branch with the right ID, and this also with the right path, and here also with the right path, so this is way cleaner and way nicer, all right? And as I said before, we're going to deal with error handling in the next few videos. So this is a way, way more elegant solution. And here in this channel, we're all about elegance. So if, we, if I ever do something not elegant, you're welcome to boo me and to send me like a few thumbs down, okay? You got that. <laughs> all right, sounds good? All right, let's take a look at how to remove a branch with the same logic. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Let's start by simply copying what we did before. So get branch, and now we're going to name this remove branch. And what are we going to do here is, and now I'm going to move this here to the beginning so that we can see the comparison a bit easier, correct? And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove all the code except for this one. And you can see that the problem here is that, let's see, for example, let's see if I try to say t.branches.remove at dot and the position, if I try to do that and to spit out t, I'm going to get an error. And I'm going to get an error. Let's see what it says. This operation is not supported in sorted list, nested types, blah, 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 requires modifying the original. I'm not sure, honestly, what this means at all. But what 
in practical form, in practical terms, it means is that from the internal list of branches that a data tree has, you just simply cannot remove an element from it. And my suspicion is that because data tree is a structure that has all these related elements, so branches are related with paths and paths are related with the topology and all of that, removing one would involve removing the other and maybe the data structure doesn't really do that. So that's why this technique is not going to work. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a similar process to what we did before, which is manually creating a new clean data tree. And then what we're going to do is in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the whole data tree. So we're going to copy all the branches and all the paths that were present in the previous data tree, all except for the one that is at position I. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a for loop where I'm going to iterate over not I because I is already here. So I'm going to use J as an iterator. J is equal to zero. J is less than the amount of branches that we have in the tree. And that is here, branch count, J plus plus. And then what I'm going to do is if the branch that I'm looking at, that's J, is different different than the branch that I have been told to remove, then I'm going to copy that branch. So to the tree, I'm going to shortcut this a little bit. To the tree, I'm going to add the range, which is going to be the branch that I want to copy at that position. So t dot t dot branches at position j and t dot at the and T dot paths at position J. So I'm going to add the branch at position J with the path at position J. Then remember there are two matching ones. I'm going to add those to the clean data tree. So that's going to copy all the branches except for the one where J, one, two, three, four, five, coincides with the index number that I have been given as an input. And then I say type clean, boom. What we can see is that now there is no branch number two here. And if I say branch number one, then I got branch number one here and I got zero and two over here. Oh, you can't see with my head. I need to chop down my head or something, right? And I can make this a little smaller and zoom in here. All right, how does this look? All right, beautiful. So we got remove branch and get branch. These two, are actually super cool. And it's very nice to work with uh, selection, which is based on index. But remember, um, this can be easy to understand now. Oh, yeah, we have a branch, we have a data tree that has 0, 1, 2. It's kind of simple, right? But what if, and so of course, this one matches with one, zero matches with zero. But sometimes if we have a more complex data tree, so for example, let me graft this data tree here, okay? And then let me plug that in here and in here and in here. If I do that, then you can see that now working with indices, it's a little less natural because honestly, if this is complex enough, I don't know if this branch is branch number 12, 14, 15, whatever it is. Maybe sometimes working with the index number is not so uh, convenient. So what I would like to do is I would like to implement a version of these two components that instead of working with the index number as an input, it works with the actual name of the full path, all the curly brackets and the semicolons, etc., as an input. So we're going to implement a version of that that takes the full path name as a string, as input, and we're going to see how to use paths as a way to get branches and remove branches. It's going to involve a little bit of string manipulation, but it's going to be quite cool. Let's see how to do that. All right, I need to attend to something that is going on in my apartment right now. <laughs> this is going to, what a messy day. I'll be right back in one minute, just one minute.
All right, I'm back. So, <clears throat> so let's get started again. All right. <clears throat> okay, all right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy myself here. Should I go back to a simple data tree or should I go back? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have the two options here. So, okay, so let's just say that, um, yes, so uh, let's just work with the grafted data tree. Why not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get branch by by path okay and then here i'm going to change this to p and the type is going to be a string what is a string here and then i'm going to write here a tiny string that is going to be one and two okay this is a very typical for example so i'm going to reclaim that branch we see it here yes all right so and then this would be the branch so how am I going to do this? Well, it turns out that, first of all, I'm going to delete all of this stuff here. And uh, I'm going to delete all of this stuff. I'm going to move this all the way here because I will need to do some calculations before that. And, um, and the first thing that I, I mean, honestly, the, all, the whole difficulty of this exercise is going to be how to parse this string into something that is a grasshopper path that we can use to, re to get branches or to remove branches because what I can do is I can say here there is actually a method called branch which we can use to retrieve a particular branch based on the path name and this will be different so you can see that the path name can be a series of characters uh, sorry a series of integers it can be a path object or it can be just one index right so turns out that um, what this exercise is going to boil down to is to be able to convert this string P into something that it's either a sequence of integers, so the numbers one and two in this case, right? Or a grasshopper path object representing those two numbers, one and two. And that is honestly just going to involve basically a uh, string manipulation so let's take a look at how that would work. In order to extract the numbers that form this path, what I basically need to do is take this string, one and two, and first of all, remove the curly brackets on the ends. Then take whatever is left and split it by the semicolons. And then once I have those, which will be strings, I need to convert them to integers. So. Um, how can I do that? So first of all, I'm going to say, I'm going to define a variable called clean string uh, str, which is going to be a copy of the input string. And then I'm going to operate on this string to, be, to start cleaning it and operating with it. The first thing that I would like to do is I would like to figure out how can I substitute or replace a bunch of uh, or eliminate a bunch of characters. So let me actually pull up the C sharp documentation for this. Okay, string methods, replace. Mm -hmm. and trim, maybe I can just replace 
Maybe you can just replace everything. Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to do this. String replace and string trim. <clears throat> There's two ways we can go about that. So the string class in C sharp has a replace method that I can use to give it uh, a pair of chars or a pair of strings so that when however many instances of the first one it finds, then it will replace them by the second one. And this is a very common, this is a very commonly used one because what we can do is we can say however many instances of the open curly bracket, just replace them with nothing, you know, and we can do that recursively. So for example, what I can say is I take str and replace, for example, the open curly, right, with nothing. And the result of this operation use it to overwrite the original string okay so we're changing the string in place you know we're not changing it in place but we are overwriting the result and we are overwriting it into the original the original variable so let's see if this works so you can see that i have found here now the result is that i have replaced the first one so i could just keep doing this and say can you replace this other curly bracket here and then I would replace that. And also, it would actually be really nice to um, add also replacement of white characters, white space characters, because if some user is not doing it in a clean way and has a character here, a white space, whatever, and, um, and another white space here, etc., right? So if it's not a clean string, then the result is going to be kind of messy. So another good thing to do probably would be to just add a white space character and remove all white space characters and leave it at nothing. Okay. So that's one way to go about it. And actually, that's probably the easiest way, I think, because I was going to suggest also using trim that replaces all the leading and all the trailing occurrences of particular characters. But since we don't really care where they are position wise, I think I'm going to save ourselves the, the hassle of using trim. So no trim, we're going to stay with replace. So you can see that uh, in this case, and maybe this might not be the most, the, the fastest way of doing it, but uh, I think at this point it doesn't really matter. So now I have a clean string, which basically has all the numbers of my path just separated with semicolons. So I already closed the documentation, but C sharp string class, I would like you to know that there's also this other method in the string class which is called split. And split, what it does is, what is method? Uh, split. The split method, if we look at the documentation, the documentation, the, 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 blah, 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 the documentation uh, tells us that given a character, all right, what split does is that it replace, it splits that string into individual segments using that character as the split character and it returns an array of those strings what that means is that for example for this sentence it's re it's returning each one of the words individually without the white spaces afterwards okay so for us it will be super useful because what we can do is we can say i'm going to declare an array of strings that is going to be digit strings and that's going to be equal to str.split by the character semicolon, all right? And if I split, and if I spit that out over the component, you can see that I have generated a list with all the numbers one after the other. The only problem is that these are actually not numbers because we, as we know here, 
the return type of split is a, an array of strings. So what we need to do now is we need to manually take each one of the strings and turn it into a, an integer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define a new integer, which is called digits. And that's going to be a new array of integers with whatever same size as what I got before. So that's going to be length. Okay. All right. And then after that, I'm going to iterate over each one of these strings. And then I'm going to convert them to an integer and store them here. So for int i equals zero, i is less than digit strings dot length, i plus plus. And then what I would like to do is at position i in the array of integers, I would like to store that original string converted to an integer. I can use for that from the integer 32 class, which is the class that all integers inherit from, I can access a bunch of functionality. So for example, parse. So I can take parse and I can say, what is the string that I want to parse and try to convert into an integer? That's going to be digit strings at position i. And then this should be should work. If I now replace this with digits, we are going to visually see no difference. But quality wise, this internally are not strings anymore. They are integers, which is great. And then we can use this array of integers to create a new grasshopper path. So grasshopper path is going to be equal to a new object of the type grasshopper path which is going to take an array of integer 32s as an argument. So that's going to be digits. And if I speed out the path now, you can see that uh, the path object is this clean string converted into a path object that itself has been converted afterwards in this panel to a string so that we can see it on the screen. Okay, but it is a path object, which is great because now we can use that finally to say, can you give me, uh, can you give me the branch, which is t dot branch? Can you give me the branch that corresponds to that path that I generated, I just generated before? Can we do that? And then I'm going to spit that here. And this is going to be a branch. All right. And this is exactly the branch that we were looking for. Is that correct? It's uh, one over one, two. So that's going to be one, two, so nine, 14, 11, 17. Exactly. That is awesome. So that's, we got it there. Okay. But hold on. What's going on here? Bef as before, this is not clean, it's not elegant, it's not outputting a tree with the branch just as we like it. Okay. So well, how, how can we do this? Well, so let me create now a data tree, what is going to be called clean. And then to this data tree, to clean, I'm going to add a range, which is going to be first of all, the branch is going to be the branch that we're going to find here. All right. Or if we want a bit more verbose, let's just fetch the branch. And then to clean, let's just add the range, let's just add this branch that we just found. And let's add it at the path that we also generated ourselves. And then now here, what I would like to output is clean, which is ooh, and actually, how about I call this tree better? All right, I'm going to call this tree up, and then tree. And there you go. And now the tree has the actual the actual name on it. And I can say, well, how about you give me 0 0.3? All right. And then I get another branch. And what if you give me 6.8? This should fail somehow. Yes, we cannot. There's no null parameter. This cannot be found, etc, etc. So 1.2. All right. Beautiful. So this was great. Um, at least as an exercise, maybe not so much about trees, but at least some string manipulation. Now, 
I'm going to show you a tiny trick. This is, an, this is a teaser to what we're going to see later. Because all of this code here, it's a lot of code to basically take a string named P and to, re and to convert it to a grasshopper path. This feels like something that we could wrap inside of a function. However, we haven't seen how to do that yet in grasshopper components, but I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Functions are actually defined here in this area called custom additional code. And I will explain in further videos down the road why this is the case. But what we're going to do is I'm going to create a function here that is going to say path from string. And then this is going to take as an input, it's going to take a, like, like, a, like a string path, for example. And then it's going to return an object of the type grasshopper path. Now I'm going to copy all of this here. All right, I'm going to copy it there. I'm going to replace this original thing. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to do the, the modifications, etc. I'm going to calculate the path. And then I'm going to return that path. And here, what I can do now, and this is a bit more elegant and clean, I can declare a variable called grasshopper path, which is going to be the result of this operation. So taking the string p and turning it into a grasshopper path. And if I run this, nothing happens, which means everything went great. And it means that we were able to take all this fuzzy code and wrap it into a nice function that we can now reuse in other components, such as, for example, on the next component, the last one, uh, which is going to be removing a branch from a data tree. Oh, that was a lot. Let's get started then. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to basically just, I'm going to copy paste this one. I'm going to say, I'm going to copy paste one and I'm going to remove branch by path. OK. And then here, this code I'm going to reuse. This I'm also going to maintain here, but I'm going to change this a little bit. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, first, I'm going to say, take T and then remove from this, it's actually going to be much easier, remove from this tree, remove a path that is under this address, the address being the path that we've generated before from this input. And then just output that same data tree that we have removed the path from. And then as we do that, ta-da, that was way easier, right? Now that we had the, the boilerplate. Because you see, we have the same tree structure, etc., etc. But when it comes to the branch 1.2, it's not there anymore. Okay? So it was, aside from this code that we could reuse, it was just as simple as defining the path and from the tree using the remove path function to remove that particular path. Okay, beautiful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, my head is spinning. Ooh, that's a lot of data that we've seen today, right? Well, we're almost done, but not quite because the last exercise that I would like to do is I would like to now go back to this one, one, and uh, where is it? Uh, divide surface, this one here. Remember this component here under the nerves components? Remember when we did subdivision of a surface in UV points, correct? Remember how we did that? 
and we found the points over the, um, over the surface. But remember how the output was not subdivided into, um, was not subdivided into trees. And um, the original component that we were copying from, the surface subdivision, this one, actually did return, if you remember, it did return an output that was in the form of a data tree. So what I would like to do now is I would like to spend a little bit of time going back to this code and rewriting it so that we can now output data trees, proper data trees from this component. Shall we do this? This is going to be the last component that we're doing before we move on, okay? Shall we do this? Oh, my back is hurting. Whew. All right. <clears throat> oh, okay. I think that the way I'm going to do this for the time being is that I'm going to keep the original flat version of this component. I'm going to move everything over here. I'm going to re keep the original flat version of this component and I'm going to copy everything and paste and make like a second version of this. So I'm going to rename this to, this is going to be flat. So, uh, all right, let's call it list, all right? I'm going, this is going to be list and then I'm going to copy everything and create a version that outputs a tree. Okay. All right. Beautiful. So, uh, all right. So, okay. So beautiful here. Uh, all right. So now let's go in and let's see what can we do here. What we would like to do is, well, first of all, I'm going to remove this all the way from here. And then what I'm going to do is before creating this lists, instead of creating this list, what I'm going to turn this is to is that I'm going to turn each one of these into a data tree. Okay, so data tree, data tree, so we're going to only output data trees of information. All right. And if I'm not correct, this should still work. Okay, it's just that now everything goes back to the default zero because we can add things without specifying paths. That's absolutely fine. The only thing that I need to do is now I would like to improve this so that all these elements, the points, the normals, the UV points, etc., they get added to a particular branch. And what I need to do first is that I need to define which branch those are going to be added to. So remember, uh, so that I can do here. So for example, I can say grasshopper path is going to be equal to a new grasshopper path. And then what I'm going to do is for the two levels, the first level and the second level, what I would like to do is that I'm going to use just, um, I'm going to use where in the I position we are, because I'm going to sort them by row. So the path that I'm going to use is going to be I, okay? And then what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say path. I need to add this element to this path. I need to add this element to this path, this element to this path, and this element to this path. And then if I do this, ta-da! What I can see now is that my output is now divided into branches, just like it would if it had been done with the original component, right? And just for the sake of Cleanness, remember that because this is the same path for all the elements in the same row, we can just do it once and not have to do it over and over again. Okay? So that was actually quite easy, right? So beautiful. And then all the elements are now into three structures and uh, that match in their structures. Okay? Beautiful. All right. So I think that's it. So 
So I think we're ready to go with this. So yeah, so that's it. So beautiful. So that was data components. Is there anything else I want to say? No. So that was data components. I hope this was helpful. I don't know how long this video took, end of the day, but I hope this was helpful, helped you understand how to create and how manipulate data trees. And um, I think with this, this is mostly what I wanted to say about data trees. So we're ready to move on, on the playlist, on this course on advanced development in Grasshopper to uh, other advanced topics uh, in C Sharp scripting, okay? And in the meantime, uh, thank you very much for being here. If you liked this video, if you found it useful, maybe consider liking, subscribing to the channel, spreading the word, giving us a kudos, a hand, heads up on Instagram, whatever you fancy. We're open to all kinds of uh, gratitude if you feel called to do. Okay, thank you very much and see you on the next video. Hey, Terence, it's been a while. Good to see you, Andres. Hola. <laughs> Thanks for being here, man. Andres, I'm going to have to give you the, the attendance award. <laughs> okay, so just a little bit of cleaning up. I cleaning up here. And I'm going to add all these components to this group here. And I'm going to move everything over here. And I forgot to, I forgot to record something so that I'm, I'm going to do now. So let me, so let me, afternoon, although I need to record the introduction, correct? Oh, I need to record the introduction. Okay. Mm. Yes, the introduction. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Hello. This is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp, and welcome to another video on this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, where we're going to get hands on again, and we're going to keep building and improving this plugin that we're building, the Parametric Camp Toolbox, or however you want to call this. And in this exercise, we're going to focus specifically on creating a set of components that work with data. So in the previous videos, I have, I have taught you how to manipulate lists and data trees in Grasshopper. So we're going to see a few examples of those, like for example, creating a component that spits out a bunch of information about the tree that we're working with, or creating components that get, the, get, get items from a list, that remove items from a list, with particular versions for the first element and the last element. Similarly, I'm going to teach you how to take a data tree and to flatten or to graph that data tree with C Sharp scripting, you're going to see how easy it is. And last but not least, and this is probably one of the most interesting ones, I'm going to teach you how to, instead of getting particular items from a full data tree, I'm going to teach you how to grab full, um, full branches from a data tree. So for example, this branch here, or this, or how to, and how to do that from an index number, and even cooler is going to be how to do this from a messed up string representation of the name of the path, okay? These are all going to be exercises that I'm going to help you understand better how
how data trees and how lists are handled inside of Grasshopper and how to create them and how to manipulate them, how to change them. All right. With that, I think it's time to hands on. Oh, and I forgot. And we're also going to take the subdivide list, the subdivide surface component that we did in previous exercises that output it a plain flat list of points. And we're going to modify that to output a tree structure of points, those points grouped in lists as the original component does. Because as I will say a lot of times in this video, we are now pro, uh, we're now professional or advanced or however you want to call it. So we want to make things nice, clean, elegant. And um, so this is the way to go. All right. So let's talk in and more typing. Let's get hands on and let's do data tree creation and manipulation using C sharp scripting. Okay. And then last, I have to record, I forgot to say something in the previous video. So I'm going to go back to that. Um, um, Andrew Human YouTube Data Trees. The deal with data trees. All right. Beautiful. I want to recommend this video of him. So I'm going to record this and I will stitch this. Uh, I will stitch this very soon sometime. I will stitch this to the previous video, 4.3. Mm Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. And I forgot to actually recommend. I really, if you really want to learn more about data trees, I cannot recommend any more Andrew Human's video called The Deal with Data Trees, where he actually goes into quite some depth explaining data trees, how they work, why are they important, and how they relate to geometrical operations. And it's very well illustrated and it's really well explained. And I actually, and it actually ends up, it doesn't get into the technicals. But it talks a lot about issues of data matching and data lacing. And he actually ends up with a set of recommendations about like uh, avoiding flattening, avoiding simplifying, and avoid basically destructive operations of data trees, which I cannot agree more with. Because um, as I also forgot to mention in the video, what's interesting about data trees is that they encapsulate so much more information than just the data itself, but the way that it is structured and in the levels of the paths is a way of inheriting the lineage of where that data is coming from, which is extremely, extremely useful when working with Grasshopper. So in general, as computational designers, the more information you have, it may feel like it's a little more difficult to handle, but that is a technical problem. And as soon as you go over that technical problem, the more information you have, the more power you can you, you, you have on your own and you can exhibit. So we want to have power. We Power leads to freedom. It leads to choices and it leads to a lot of good things. All right. So if you want to learn more, um, 
there should be a link to Andrew's lecture somewhere here, blah, 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 and on the card or on the di <laughs> of the description. It's so late, sorry, I've been recording all day. <laughs> a card should be popping up or the link should be on the description or both, okay? But I really, really strongly recommend this video. It's really well done and very nice graphically illustrated. Let's go back to the main video. All right, and with that, I'm, I'm calling it a day today because I need to go to school. I need to take care of a lot of things. I, need, I have like 20 million emails to respond to. Ah, sorry, life is getting, the fall semester is just, it's just, it's just the worst. And the best, because I get to go to be back in session and teach in person, which is nice, but it's very busy. <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone. And I will see you in the next live stream, which I have no idea when it will be, but hopefully sometime soon. All right. Thank you. And bye-bye. Have a nice weekend. See you.